Alright, hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. I've got an awesome video for you guys today. So, if for those of you guys who know slash don't know, there's a game called Last Epoch that I've been following for the better part of like maybe three to four years. It's an upcoming action role-playing game that's went through, you know, basically when it first came out and it was in early access three years ago, the game looked pretty shit. Um, but now it's getting much, 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 much better and it's looking real awesome. So I basically want to just jump in and kind of show you guys a little bit about the game and how much it's improved. Now before I go ahead and say anything, I want to preface this by stating there are still a lot of lag issues, there are still a lot of um, things feel a little bit wonky here and there, but that's okay. You know, like if you think of a game like Grim Dawn, Grim Dawn's not the smoothest game ever and it's extremely successful, right? Um, this game is more like, I, I know there's still going to be polishing the combat, not the combat necessarily, but like some things just feel a little clunky still. Um, that is all being worked on. Every time I've come back to Last Epoch, it has gotten better and better and better and better. But more so, the more important thing is every time I come back, I, I get this nostalgic feeling like when I used to play um, Path of Exile six years ago, um, where every time I play, it's like a different character. So this go around, I, I'll just give you the quick TLDR. I've got a Sentinel. We are currently a sword and board um, whirlwind build. However, we have zero on hit damage for the most part. We have a little bit of fire on hit, but we're pretty much all ignite. The way ailments work in this game is once you go past 100% chance, anything past 100% is an additional chance to inflict it multiple times. So one 20% ignite means you ignite once with a 20% chance at two. In total right if you have 800 ignite that's eight ignites per so <clears throat> basically we have sentinel here and we're essentially just zooming through all the way to get the attack speed via blade master uh, this is strength this just gives us some defenses on block then over in paladin which is where we're specialized in um, essentially we're just taking more uh, Ignite, I won't go through everything, but Ignite is the heavy focus on this build. To go through something else more important, um, this is our Whirlwind, which is our main focus, right? So we've got basically two points in Iron Reach here to give us some AoE that connects into Whirling Blades, which is useless, but it allows us to get Unchained, which reduces the mana cost. The way this works is when you are cycloning, it's channeled and it's considered a mana drain, so you can't really get mana back. So we try to go for a really long uptime on Cyclone. Then over here, I've specced into more reduced channel cost. Then I've got Draining Assault for a damage multiplier while it's active, which does work for the Ignite. Then I've got Grasp, which if you know anything about PoE, this is basically reverse knockback. And then I scale the knockback. Then we've got Holy Aura, which has a penetration of fire. Then every eight attacks, or when we activate our Holy Aura every four attacks, basically creates a flame burst, which can shotgun slash AoE overlap, uh, which works really well with the reverse knockback. Then I've got Rebuke, which is on my Q here, which basically I hold it down, I get a bunch of mana regen while it's active, I get life regen, I'm basically really tanky when, I'm almost immortal when that's up. Uh, then I've got Sigil of Hope, which is kind of whatever right now, it's just an extra filler. Uh, at the moment, it has a 6% chance to proc on kill. I've scaled it for very long duration. While it's active, it gives me uh, block chance, damage, and armor. And then I've got Lunge. Basically, Lunge just gives me a buff while it's active for a little bit of defenses. I'm also immune during the animation of Lunge. And the important thing to note is I have a unique ring. Legendaries in this game or uniques are super awesome. It's kind of like Diablo 2 gambling. You gamble for the base item from the shop and it has a chance to become legendary. So that's exactly actually how I farmed mine. I looked up at the base items and then you'll look. So for example, I search for a katana. Um, so if I just refresh, you'll see until the katana pops up. Okay, the game's, oh, you know, two T's is not how you spell katana. Okay, this is very bad luck. Am I an idiot? You spell it? There it goes. So there's a katana. Then you would buy it. It rolls its rarity as an example here. If you get lucky, it rolls legendary slash set item. So for this one, as an example, I gambled ruby rings. This is your idle feature or idle system here, which is basically charms from Diablo 2. And I'm not going to go through everything because it's going to take too long. So I'm just going to jump into a map. Here is the weapon I'm using. It's basically pure ignite. 
Uh, the gloves, since they are unique, give us super melee speed. Our ring gives us 100% chance at glancing blow while we're channeling, which basically means as long as I'm cycloning or using rebuke, I have a 100% chance that I take half damage, and then we've got block on top of that. So enough with that. Let me go jump into a map. So I think we go over here. And then while I'm mapping, I'll talk a little bit about the end game feature. So this is a new system. Basically, when you clear enough maps here, you'll be able to fight a super epic boss that's really unfun to fight for melee right now. If you successfully kill the boss, you get to pick from one of three permanent augments to your character. So let's see, 30% uh, health versus frenzy and haste. I'll definitely take the health. Uh, and then those augments can be re-rolled by killing the boss again. They have a bunch of different modifiers. For me, I rolled uh, money, so I can basically gamble more. Spell effects are kind of brutal right now. We'll figure out something about them later. <laughs> but for now, it's pretty screen cluttery. Uh, the more things you kill, the more loot you get at the end. But since I already spoke about the build for five minutes, I just kind of want to zoom through this. It took a little bit of time to get my character where it's at now. We were doing pretty much one-tenth the damage I was doing for quite a while. And I'll compare this to like playing, if you want to, SSF Path of Exile, where, um, you know, this character is solo self-found. It's an actual mode. And it's really fun kind of seeing your progression kind of go forward. There we go. And then we're low on mana, so we'll channel to get our mana back. And then charge. Holy Aura. Rebuke. Charge. Good. Uh, there's no loot filter yet. That's definitely something they're going to be working on. Then after this, you go back inside the portal. Uh, from your portal, you tap this based off the amount of mobs you kill. So I got no loot here basically because I didn't really kill anything. I'm just going to go ahead and run another one. So that is increased damage and I forgot what the other one said. All of these modifiers will stack, uh, assuming it says that, you know, applies for X amount of maps. Now, every so often when you run these maps, this is where the new endgame feature comes in. There will be this quest that pops up. To my knowledge, at least the way I had to do it, I had to do two of the quests. And it, as long as you don't die, you can keep on scaling. Once you die, you basically have to start this all over again. So it's kind of like a, like a real build check. You know, you can't just play a random DPS character and just expect... I mean, you can, but like if you get one shot, you have to start all over again, basically. Right? So I kind of like that. The way they're balancing their game is less about clear speed and more about like well-balanced builds which is cool if you want to engage in all the content there's a shrine let's get some mana back cool uh, yeah. okay, yeah. if you're wondering why it looks like the character takes no damage at times it's because of that 100 percent glancing blow i have plus the um Plus the fact that I have like 70 block chance as well. I cannot do that. Stand down or die. Hmm. I think we need to go this way to the left. No? Yeah, yeah. Probably all the way to the left. I really like the uh, idle system. It's cool because there's uh, more than just raw stats on them. There are procs on some of them. There are conversion of skills on some of them as well. There's like uh, skill procs that can happen too. So this makes it pretty interesting to farm. And then the crafting in this game is phenomenal. Uh, I'll explain a little bit about the crafting here once we are done running this map. Or maybe the next map. I'm not sure. Probably this map. Ooh, I heard a bit. Oh, yes. So one of the other new things in this game. This is perfect. In conjunction with crafting this purple item here what this purple item means is that the affix that dropped on it is tier six so just think of path of exile if i hold alt on this you can see tier six is drop only in this game when you're crafting your gear you can craft a maximum of up to tier five um, there's four affixes on a piece of gear so you're looking at a four property tier five item you can drop tier six affixes and if you're high enough you can also drop tier 7 affixes. So what this means is there's a really nice incentive to farm in this game because it's kind of like you're farming for at least 
one or two really high tier affixes on a usable base, then you're going to craft on that base in hopes that you get the exact, you know, outcome that you want. Of course, you don't need perfect gear to play every single build. That is, you know, not a thing. But for people who are looking for some more longevity, there is, you know, like chase items and chase gear now, essentially, via crafting, which is really nice. Legendary? Nope. What do we have here? Sixteen percent glancing blow. That's really good. Too bad I don't need it. Okay, so I didn't get what I was trying to show you guys. Where basically it pop. It's really noticeable. It's like this teal looking skull thing will pop up here, and essentially you will do that, and then you'll keep going. So you can see it says Echoes Conquered Three. It's probably on the next one. It'll happen. So four. Usually around I would say ten to. 14 is when I get to fight my big boss. Uh, after you fight the big boss and you kill him, you will unlock a blessing here. Um, and then this blessing has random rolls on it, and there's a bunch of different types of blessing blessings. So I guess you can kind of see this up at the here, uh, up at the here, <laughs> up here at the top, basically. I'm just really happy that they've in incorporated the system. Before, I feel like a lot of ARPGs is kind of chased like the greater rifting and this is somewhat similar to Greater Rifting, I, I will not deny that, but it adds like an element for you. You're not just grinding Paragon, you're grinding, you know, your chance at, uh, your chance at your, what are these even called? I don't even know, your blessings. Then you have like your crafting affixes, then you're actually hunting for base items to craft on. So I really like that, that's, that's like a super nice mix for me. And then of course you're hunting for your idle drops, which are like your... Uh, your charms, right? So there's always kind of like a little bit of a chase. And then by doing those, you get to do the arena, where the arena is just infinite waves of mobs that come at you, depending on how strong your build is. Uh, and then another nice thing is, you can see that these items here, um, this is why I say they're setting up for a loot filter. These items here stay purple, right? Even though they're not on the floor. So it's really easy to identify, you know, what you're potentially crafting on and everything else. So to go over the crafting system and how this works really easily, you open up F, F is your crafting. These here are basically all the affixes that I've acquired from killing monsters slash breaking down your gear. Um, say you have a really cool piece of gear, like let's look at this. Say this was my old weapon and I really value fire damage. I need fire, just pretend I need fire damage. If I put this item over here and I select a rune of shattering uh, and I break it down, it will essentially give me runes of fire damage, melee attack speed, cold protection, fire protection. It's not guaranteed I get all of them, and it's not guaranteed I get 5, 5, 2, and 4, but it gives you a chance at getting them. Uh, all of them basically are the same tier when they're in this crafting thing, and the way it works is you will put your piece of gear here. After you put your piece of gear here, so T5 means it's maxed, right? So let's look at poison protection. I'll type in poison. So to add poison protection here, you can see that when I'm crafting, let me just move this, there is a chance for success, so there's glyphs. So I have Glyph of Guardian, which completely mitigates a minor fracture, reduces a damage fracture to a minor fracture, or a destructive fracture to a damaging fracture. So basically, the Glyph of the Guardian um, lowers, is it lowers the instability? No, 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 it basically prevents it from exploding, right? Yeah. So 13% destructive, I think that means it's your weapon, your piece of gear basically explodes and goes boom. Damaging, I'm not sure. Maybe it has inferior stats. Minor, I think it just means you cannot craft it anymore. So if you look here, um, this piece of gear I have is fractured, right? So this fractured piece of gear, you can tell I was pushing for either the elemental protection higher or the damage, or no, definitely not damage, fuck that. So I was definitely pumping the elemental protection. But it bricked and it's broken now. However, it's not fully broken, it just means I can't craft on it anymore, but I can still use it, which is fantastic because nobody wants to be punished, right? So this way I can keep this piece of gear on until I have crafted a new piece of gear uh, and then replace that. So the reason why you want to find those like tier 7 and tier 6 affixes is because you would have a locked in super high tier craft and every time you add a crafting affix you're lowering the chance of success overall. So 
basically if you have a clean item and you're crafting it from blank it's extremely unlikely that you're going to hit four property tier fives without your piece of gear breaking because it is going to build up instability over time but that being said it's also nice because you can just craft your gear on the go if you find a piece of gear that has two usable stats you can just craft on it and it's ready until your next upgrade so the crafting has been super super fun i've really been enjoying it um, the character customization so far has been spot on and it just feels really really good so anyway hope you guys enjoyed the video uh, if you did please feel free to like share and subscribe and don't forget you can catch me streaming live every day except for sundays at twitch.tv slash pox I may be setting up a chrono.gg store uh, in the near future, which basically means I can recommend and put games on the store, and I can notify you guys when it goes on sale, such as Last Epoch, and then you get a discount, and then I get a cut, which is pretty cool. But that's all stuff in the future. Anyway, take care. Have a wonderful time. I'll see you guys all tomorrow.